They never prepare you for the moment when you find out that the project everyone says doesn't exist does exist. And that it's you. It's Girl in Space. It's been over 2,000 days now since you disappeared, and just a couple hundred less since Mom (laughs) disappeared too, I guess. I wonder what the probability of that is, both parents disappearing on completely unrelated occasions within mere Earth years of each other. Well, in a more Dickensian scenario, it would probably be 100%, but I digress. It doesn't hurt as much to think about you now. That was a surprise, actually. I I didn't think that would happen. I really thought it would just hurt that badly forever. But the pain has diminished into a dull ache that simmers and rankles in my heart instead of trying to burst it outright. Which is good? Maybe? I don't know. I feel guilty that I can move on and you can't, that I'm here and you're not. I know it doesn't make any rational sense, but it's how I feel. And while the image of your face has started to fade, as much as I've tried to hold on to it, I can still recall your voice, if only because it's here on my recorder, one last living memory of you calling me your little bird while pushing me on the swing in the glass house. Don't fly too high now, little bird. You'd say that, though I think really what you wanted for me was the exact opposite. (laughs) Speaking of the exact opposite, Mom was the other way. Always telling me I had unlimited potential and never allowing me to fully explore it. My memories of her are less rosy, let's say, than my memories of you. I hardly remember at all what she looked or sounded like. I I just remember that she pushed me to perform and to succeed so hard. And yet I knew that somehow she was holding me back, keeping me from something, or keeping something from me. Also, you know, she wasn't unkind, I guess, just blunt, straightforward. When the Kavatika's engines first began their slow slide toward inevitable failure, I remember she took me aside and explained exactly what would happen to our bodies as we asphyxiated and slowly froze to death. I remember you told her to stop. She told you to stop coddling me. She was always like that. I didn't necessarily want her to be, but she was. She was cold, rough hands and engine grease and smoke and vial after vial of blood lined up across the galley countertops. And you were sandalwood and orange slices and baby birds and plants sprouting up tender and new in the bright warm sun. Still, I I didn't hate her. Not like I could have, or maybe should have. When your whole world is two people, it's hard, and unwise even, to excise half out of pettiness. 
I do remember that she made up for it when she sang. Somehow that made everything okay again. It reminded me that there was beauty inside of her too, even if she kept it locked up and jealously guarded like a golden bird in a cage. I used to think that I took after you and only you, with my dark hair and eyes and skin and affinity for green growing things. <laughs> my stupid laugh. My inability to sing. But recently, I've noticed more of her in the things I do, slipping through the crenellations of my brain like insidious black dye. Her ambition, her calculating mind, her dismissal of the validity of things felt and dreamt, her impatience, her intolerance, her ability to create a fast emotional distance. Even now, my hands are cold and rough from work. It worries me. I'm so afraid that if I become her, I'll lose what's left in me of you. I'll begin to do the things that she did. Make the sacrifices she made. The excuses. I'm not ready for that. Anyway... Happy birthday to me. Day 10 mark 318, hour 4.45. I'm... Well, we're moving. Me and Kai and Thor through the hallways toward my parents' suite. Thor says she found a body. I don't even know what to think about that, other than this immediate need to see it, because I think I know whose it is. I'm not thinking yet about how I'm going to deal with it. I still have a few minutes before we get there, before all of the unreal possibilities harden into one finite reality. <laughs> Schrodinger's corpse. Maybe I shouldn't be making jokes. Is that tacky? I have no idea. Speaking of tacky, Charlotte's not with us. I don't know where she is. I haven't seen her since I left her glitching out in the glasshouse pod. Part of me needs her to be here, to confirm that all of this is real. I mean, even though I know Charlotte lies to me all the time. Maybe that's what I want right now. Lies. Or maybe I just want to see how she reacts to something irrevocably true. Thanks for getting here so quickly. The counselor's on his way and I wanted a few minutes to touch base without him breathing down our necks. No prob. At 0424, Officer Thorson successfully entered and began reconnaissance of this pod. It's one of two residential cabins, and- Jeez, what'd you do? Bomb your way in? Yes, Chance. I used a bomb and no one noticed. And it did absolutely zero hull damage. I think it is safe to assume she used that pneumatic drill over there. It's sad when the killbot's more reasonable than you, Chance. <clears throat> At 0429, Officer Thorson radioed me that she had discovered a body in one of the interior rooms of the pod. I sent for Dr. Keene, who's in there now, deciding whether a quarantine is necessary. Who, who is it? The, um, the body. We don't know yet, X. You can go in once we get the all clear from Dr. Keene, okay? Yeah, okay. All right, Thor, you'll debrief the counselor here with me when he arrives. Chance, you're with Dr. Keene. Do whatever she tells you to do. Kai, you'll accompany X once we're cleared. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Roger that. Good. Because here he comes. I hear our persistence has at last borne fruit. Good work, Officer Thorson. Captain Chen, has the identity of the body been confirmed? Did you just refer to a corpse as fruit? Not yet, Counselor. Dr. Keene is still running through the contingency manual and making her assessment. No matter. The specimen is wearing a vacuum suit and Officer Kai won't be affected by whatever's in there. You there, 
go inside and identify the body so that we can all get on with our day. Uh, if I were the type of person to take orders, I would take them from Chen. Maybe. But I'm not, so I'm just going to wait until Dr. Keen says there's no risk of me contracting the screaming space madness, and... Officer Kai, escort the specimen inside the pod. If she continues to hinder rather than help our efforts, shoot her. And take your weapon off of the stun setting first. Is that necessary, sir? She's unarmed. It's necessary if I say it is necessary, officer. You know what? Screw this. I choose to go inside. Come on, Kai. Watch your step, X. Anything looks off, get out of there. Okay. I can go in with them and make sure Dr. Keen... That won't be necessary. No use in you risking contamination, Officer Chance. Uh, yes, sir. Ready? Yeah. Officer Thorson. I hear you also have a theory regarding the crashed fighter ship. Ah, that guy sucks. He's just doing his job, same as we are. Right. (sighs) Okay. So, I'm walking into my parents' suite. With the exception of my visit to my mother's study, it's been... Gosh, thousands of days since I was in here. Though, at the same time, it feels like just yesterday. You visited your mother's study? What? No. Uh, lots of rubble in here by the entryway. I can see why Chance thought a bomb had gone off. Uh, again, no power in the pod, but the ceiling is lit by a thick layer of that bioluminescent fungi. And the walls are covered in vines and... Ow! Watch your step. Here. Thank you. Stupid vacuum suit. Anyway... Uh, The flora is surprisingly rich and complex throughout the hallway, and there's an abundance of blue-green spores floating through the air toward us. As if... As if what? Uh, never mind. Up ahead is the entrance to the sitting room. We're entering it now. The couch and armchairs are still arranged around the old coffee table, which is still piled high with books. But some kind of bright green vine is growing over it all, originating from a torn, moldy back cushion of Dad's armchair. I'll have to take a sample of it on my way back out. Otherwise, all their stuff, uh, lamps, vases, auxiliary food storage, bookcases... Everything's in its place. Just like the furnishings in, well, what used to be my quarters. It's everything anyone could ever want. Everything Caldwell Enterprises could provide. Uh, To the left is the door to my mother's study, which I definitely haven't been inside of recently. And to my right is the door to my father's office. Both are shut and presumably locked. Straight ahead is the door to their bedroom, which is open. I'm guessing that's where we'll find Dr. Keen. The bioluminescent spores seem to be floating along a soft air current, though I I can't feel it from inside my suit. The spores appear to be non-toxic, though this time I can make no guarantees. I understand that this may be... Emotionally taxing for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Dr. Keen? What are you doing in here? The counselor insisted. (sighs) Oh my gosh. It's... uh, Okay. It's okay. I'm okay. Focusing on cataloging and reporting... Putting emotions aside. So. It's a nice large room with a bed and a wardrobe. And nope, I can't do this. It's her. She's here. This whole time, she's been right here. Dr. Keene, I had no idea she was in here. I swear. I'm just... (sighs) 
she's so still. She's just lying here in bed, face up, her eyes closed, her hair all spilled across the pillow, this weird little smile fixed on her face. All across her skin is this... She's covered in thousands of slender stalks of that bioluminescent fungi, like a miniature glowing forest. Her body seems to be the source of the fungi that are covering the ceiling throughout the pod. But it's her. It's everything she ever was. She's wearing what she always wore, an engineering jumpsuit with black boots and her tool belt, except her sleeves are pushed up and some of the fungus has ruptured through the fabric over her chest, and... What are those? Did you put those in, Dr. Keene? No, I'm trying to figure that out myself. Uh, they're, they're... They're hidden in the dense growth of the fungi, but... They look like the IVs that the Caldwell Enterprises people put into my wrists. There's one in each of her forearms. And they're not clear, they're black. And... Oh! There are two more! Look! In her temples, hidden by her hair in those dense clumps of hard black stuff... There's one more at the base of her neck as well. What are they for? Is she still alive? She doesn't look like she's dead. She looks exactly the same as I remember her. Preserved. Pristine. I mean, beneath all the fungus. I don't know. She's not registering any heart, respiratory, or brain activity. But I've never seen... It's thoughtware. What? Augmented consciousness. Wetware. She must have been trying to install something and... Never woke up. What... What would she have been trying to install? Any number of things. The IVs hook up to the console over here, but with the power dead, it'll be hard to tell. That's not possible. What? It works. But the power is dead in this pod. Look, it's not even plugged in. This doesn't make any sense. I'm powering the Kavatica's three active pods with the hydroponic system in the glass house. Could something similar be happening here? Maybe. I guess what I'm asking is, could she be powering it? I mean, could the IVs be output instead of input? I don't know. The electromagnetic output of a typical human being would barely be enough to power one of those lamps, let alone this console. What have you got for us, Kai? The counselor is anxiously awaiting a report. Would you like to? It's her. It's my mother. All right. X, do you want to stay in there a while longer? Call off the search for Dr. Rousseau and renew the investigation into the jettisoned escape pod. I... I don't know. What am I supposed to want? What's normal? Whatever makes you comfortable. If you change your mind later, you can always come back. This is weird. (laughs) I'm a foot away from her, and she can't tell me I'm not good enough. She can't say anything. Okay, uh, I want to go. But she'll be here later if I want to come back? Yes, I promise. All right. Coming back toward you. Roger that. Um, hold on. I need a sample of this vine. All right. Officer Kai, you may now take the specimen for decontamination and await further orders in the Enforcer One's infirmary. I notice your weapon is still set for stun. You will want to remedy that before I see you again. Roger that. The appropriate response is yes, sir, or yes, counselor. Do you also need to be decontaminated? No, sir. Good. Take her away. Wait. X, are you okay? I think so. You don't look like it. I said take her away. Sir, she just saw her mother's dead body. Don't you have any idea what that feels like? Have some compassion. 
Captain Chen, perhaps you have forgotten that this thing before you is not, in fact, a human being, that it in fact has no parents, that it is a product of not only gross and unchecked experimentation, but willful disobedience, and both the physical and intellectual property of Caldwell Enterprises. I'm right here. If you cannot keep a level head over a scientific aberration, the Council will be forced to question your placement on this task force, and any future placements as well. It would be a shame to lose you, but there are many young recruits eager to take your place, recruits who are more closely aligned with Caldwell Enterprises' mission, vision, and values. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. That's a demerit on your record, of course, but I'm glad you're capable of seeing reason. Oh, before you go, Officer Kai, can you tell me what your weapon is set for? It's set for kill, sir. Good. Dismissed. Now, I am going to have a word with Dr. Keene about her findings. And when I return, you and I are going to discuss the fundamentals of the chain of command. Scientific aberration. That council dude has a sickeningly narrow definition of human being. I understand the feeling. Most people who meet me think I'm some kind of robot. Oh my gosh, that is super rude. Also, are you not some kind of robot? I am just as human as you are. Well, according to the counselor, I'm not human. Oh, right. (laughs) So I'm a scientific aberration who looks human, and you're a human who looks like a scientific aberration. Is that about right? I guess that sums it up pretty well. So this is probably also extremely rude, but... I know you don't need oxygen, and you've indicated that your vision isn't exactly organic. What happened to you? Or were you born like this? Can I know? I'm not asking to be mean or anything. I just... No, I don't mind. Will you share why the counselor keeps referring to you as a specimen? Totally. All right. I've been with Caldwell Enterprises my entire career. When I was younger, I was very good at my job. I climbed the ranks quickly and was assigned to increasingly complex projects. Eventually, and perhaps inevitably, there was an accident. Hmm. This is all very vague. Do you not like talking about yourself? No. Or at least, I'm not used to it. You can stop if you want. No, that's alright. This is good. Probably. The accident destroyed the majority of my organic tissue. Though I had been wearing a newly engineered helmet that managed to keep my brain functional and intact. Several portions of my spine had survived as well. Caldwell Enterprises medics collected what they could find and housed the surviving pieces here, in this suit. Wow, that was surprisingly nice of them? I was... a valuable asset. And the procedure wasn't exactly without price. What do you mean? Like, you miss having basic human sensory experiences? Yes... But also... What are you... Whoa. Sweet. Metal bones. Look at my wrist bone. What does it say? Oh, stamped into the metal? Property of... Oh. Wow. Is there anything that isn't? Not that I've seen. (laughs) You can't just run around putting your name on things and pretending they're yours. I know a corporate entity that might disagree. Yeah, well, I disagree right back. That stamp doesn't mean anything if you don't let it. Neither does my tattoo. You know that, right? I'm not really sure you can reassign meaning to things at will like that. Caldwell Enterprises did manufacture my chassis. They do technically own me. Most of me. But I appreciate the sentiment. I observe and interpret the world around me. It's all any of us human beings can do. So what about your story? Well, it's not nearly as exciting as yours. Uh, You know how there's a whole drawer full of frozen goat embryos back in the glasshouse lab? 
basically, there used to be a whole drawer of me's back there, too. <laughs> I, I asked my mom one day where babies came from, and she just opened the drawer and showed me. There's a whole drawer of human embryos aboard the Cavatica? Used to be. And, like the counselor said, our humanity is debatable. Why? What else could you be? A big old chunk of asexually derived genetic stock? A clone. Right. That doesn't mean you're not human. There are human clones. I don't know. Apparently, there was some debate as to the provenance of the embryos. Where they came from. I mean, where we came from. Or what we had been subjected to. I mean, I think it's at least part of the reason I can't exist outside of the light of Ra. As for the counselor's stupid jerkface attitude, my dad told me once that not everyone back on Earth was okay with clones. And in fact, human cloning had been declared illegal just before he and my mom left. I guess people were buying and selling clones and harvesting their organs and using them for slave labor and stuff. I don't know. You would probably know better than I would. I've heard rumors. Oh. And uh, I guess even after the ban, he said there was this huge debate as to whether the existing clones had equal rights. I mean, whether they were considered true specimens of the species, whether they had souls or whatever, or whether they were a violation of human dignity. Obviously, the counselor believes I'm the latter. Well, you look human to me. Thanks. And you look human to me. Thank you. So, just to alleviate any future awkwardness, if I were to offer you some delicious cheese... I would not be able to eat it, but I would appreciate the offer. Hmm. Good to know. Day 10 Mark 318, hour 1916. Okay, so Kai brought me aboard the Enforcer 1 for decontamination, but I'm back now, thankfully. Decontamination was unpleasant. And I don't really think I was contaminated with anything in the first place, but at least they didn't keep me away from the Cavatica long enough for me to get sick again, so yay! Either way, I'm back at my workstation now. That counselor dude sent orders that I'm supposed to be making double time on Ra, but I don't think he actually understands what it is I do, or he'd get that Ra is already healing way more quickly than I'd thought possible. In fact, I might be mystified if I didn't have so much other stuff on my mind. Anyway, I told Kai that I'm working on Ra, but... Really, I've just been running some background tests while focusing on a couple of other things. Uh, don't listen for a second, okay, Kai? Roger that. <laughs> so, I figured out the password to that data pad that I found in my mother's study. It wasn't hard, and you probably guessed it right away. Six alphanumeric characters plus Charlotte's otherwise unaccountable spaz attack? Duh. Find me. Now, I don't know if that means Charlotte knew I would find it, and that she wanted me to unlock it. Is that too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence? I don't know. I still haven't seen Charlotte, so I can't ask her. Not that she'd give me a straight answer anyway. But I digress. The reason I'm not more jazzed about unlocking the data pad is that all of the data inside is encoded. I've tried a couple of simple substitution ciphers, but no dice. It's not even written in an alphabet I'm familiar with. I'll keep working on it and report back when I know more. Hey, Kai, you can listen again. I mean, if you want to. You don't have to, of course. Roger that. In cheese-related news, the new Daisy embryo is all set up in the incubator. Though I think she was potentially affected by Ra's period of imbalance... It's hard to tell at this juncture, though, so I just set up a couple of extra monitoring parameters and will keep an extra close eye on her development. What else? Oh, yeah. 
I swiped samples of both the vine and the glowing fungus from your pod, and turns out they're both just boring old run-of-the-mill kudzu, or Puraria montana, and Panella stipticus. It's just weird that they were growing so abundantly in what had previously been such an oxygen-poor atmosphere. Though, relatively speaking, it's a lot less weird than most other things here on the Cavatica right now. Make of that what you will. Huh. I still feel like I'm forgetting something. A discourse on your emotional state after having discovered the body of your mother? Nope. That is not a thing I am dealing with right now. Oh. Bemoaning the presence of the Caldwell Enterprises personnel aboard what you had previously thought of as your ship? Right. Thanks. So, yeah, I've been thinking. Nothing gold can stay, right? But who's to say it was even gold to begin with? Or that there's nothing out there better than gold. I'm not naive. I know there's no such thing as the good old days. The Cavatica was falling apart long before the Caldwell Enterprises fleet arrived, and life will always have its problems. And wishing for a misremembered, rose-tinted past is not only naive, but dangerous. I know the only way forward is forward. But what does forward mean? Do I even have a forward? What's forward for you, Kai? I've been thinking about that whole chain of command thing that Chen told me about. The pack structure that Caldwell Enterprises makes you follow to ensure your obedience and safety. What about it? Okay, so Chen has a forward. He could one day supplant the alpha figure, the counselor, who's all elderly and frail and also a stupid jerk face. But what about you? You're beneath Chen in the pack structure, but it seems like you're friends. Or at least you wouldn't want to tear out his throat to supplant him. Correct. Okay, so for you, forward is with Chen, not against him. See, I'm working on this idea of moving forward with and not against things. What do you think? I think you've discovered politics. So you're going to give in and play ball with the counselor? Something like that, yeah. What? Nothing. You were looking at me weird. I was not. You were. You have no idea what I was looking at. In fact, you know that I don't even have eyes. I felt it. Oh my gosh, and now you're rolling your non-existent eyes. This is ridiculous. Find me. Find me. Find me. Oh my gosh. Find me. Charlotte, find where me. were you? Find me. Never mind. Find me. I think she find wants me. us to find her. Find me. Very astute. Find me. Find Charlotte, me. where find me? Where do find we need me. to go? How find can me. we find you? Find me. It's like it's, it's like, like it's like I've been saying all along. The children are the key. The key. The key. But we I need your help. The station can't survive another incident. Please. 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 I know you're out there. Find me. Find me. Find me. Find me. Find me. Oh my gosh. That was less than helpful. Hmm. She's not rebooting. No, uh, I... This whole time, I know where to go. Where is she? Where's all the fungus? The bed is here, and that machine, but where is she? Kai, I'm not insane, right? No, I'm just as confused as you are. Hello? Dr. Keen? Can I help you? Um, is Dr. Keen around? She said I could come back and see my, um, my mother? Oh. Yes, I, I'm, I'm literally sorry. I, I don't know a Dr. Keen, but uh, is there something I can help you with? Uh, yeah. Where's my mother's body? Mm. Yes, I, I'm afraid I, I'm not at liberty to release that information. What? Why? You, you don't have the appropriate clearance code. Who says? Check your wrist. Delta Charlie 61894. There's your clearance code. Now where's the body? 
And where's Dr. Keene? Officer Kai, is it? Hmm. I'm sorry, but um, your clearance code has been revoked. Excuse me? Your clearance code has been revoked. Now move along, please. This is a restricted area. I've been with Caldwell Enterprises longer than you've been alive. I am an Eckhart-level officer with two medals of honor and a Purple Heart. There's no possible way my clearance has been revoked. Here. Captain Chen? Hmm. Yes, and unfortunately, um, Captain Chen has been relieved of his position on the Ra Initiative Task Force. What? Yes, you may take up any grievances with human resources. This is insane. Where is she? Wait, X. Don't. Tell me! Freeze. You are hereby under arrest for attempting to harm an operative of Caldwell Enterprises and, as the physical and intellectual property of said organization, any and all rights you may otherwise be privy to are forfeit. Wait. Officer Kai, stun and cuff her. It's not set for stun. Holy crap, Kai! What happened to no murdering? She's not dead, only debilitated. Her leg is on the other side of the room! As I said, she is only debilitated. She may go into shock when she regains consciousness, but the wound is more or less cauterized. Come on. Jeez, alright. Who was she? Is she? I mean, who is she? A fixer, from corporate. I don't know what that means, but I can guess. Um, are, are you going to get in trouble for debilitating her? The fact that she's here means we're already in trouble. Ah, good. Well, where do you think they're holding my mother's body? On board the Enforcer 1, most likely. Think Chen is there too? Yes. Are we going to save him? Yes. Yay! Do I get a gun? No. Oh, come on. I'll keep it set for stun. No. But what if we run into danger? That is what I am for. For danger? Correct. Cool. Well, I'm here for reason, and I say we need a plan that's more carefully thought out than let's rush blindly aboard the enemy ship. Or maybe not enemy, since you work there. Worked there. I'm assuming your employment is just as terminated as Chen's, but assuming is bad, so... Also, what do you think happened with Chen? Actually, never mind. Planning. Now is for planning. How many total people are in the fleet out there? Like, are we dealing with hundreds or thousands or... Eighteen. Really? Eighteen... Eighteen people? That's it? Yes. Fighters are all AI. Most systems are optimized for a skeleton crew. Huh. Wow. Okay. The chain of command is a lot shorter than I thought. So, I'm not sure how to go about officially asking this, but want a mutiny with me? What do you think we've been doing? Kai, you there? I'm here, Thor. Go ahead. Uh, what's going on? We just got a notification that Chen has stepped down as commanding officer. We're supposed to report to the Enforcer 1 for debriefing and reassignment? I heard the same thing. Is Chance with you? Yeah. Good. Meet me at the Kavatica's cockpit pod before heading to the debrief, okay? Okay. And Kai, keep an eye out for the experiment girl. They said she went crazy and escaped custody or something. There's an order to shoot on sight. Copy that. See you soon. All right. So before Thor and Chance arrive, how did you know Charlotte wanted you to find your mother's body? Because when I heard her voice like that... Kai, that was my mother's voice. Charlotte's been using my mother's voice this entire time. Support for the Girl in Space podcast is made possible by listeners like you. You can help keep the show going, get sweet merch, and access bonus episodes for as little as $2 a month when you become a patron on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash girlinspace, all one word, to check out exclusive rewards for patrons and make your pledge. That's patreon.com 
p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash girl in space. For credits and a full transcription of this and other episodes of Girl in Space, please visit girlinspacepodcast.com. If you're interested in creative writing, be sure to check out my other show, Right Now. That's right, like W-R-I-T-E, because puns. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to the Girl in Space podcast. It means so much. <laughs>